morning. It's 5.30 a.m. The 12th, I think it's the 12th today of August 2024. Uh, gold to $100,000 an ounce and silver to $7,000 an ounce. You say, uh, really, do you think that that's going to happen? Well, anything is possible when your nation is held hostage by a central bank. Um, the bankers are in control of this nation right now. The nation of America, of course, is what I'm speaking about because that's where I'm standing, in the state of Maine, in the nation of America. And um, I keep hearing all these different things. All these people have these videos. You'll see these things, and it'll be 60,000 an ounce, 40,000 an ounce, and people making predictions. And it's not just wild, random, whatever. Uh, it's actually backed up a lot of times by scientific things. The gold to silver ratio is way out of whack right now. Um, it's historically supposed to be about 15 to 1, 15 ounces of silver for one ounce of gold. Um, it's not anywhere near that right now. It's, I don't even know what it is, 80 or so, 90 to, to 1. I forget the, the whole thing. There's the paper to silver, paper, paper to gold ratio that comes into this whole thing. The crashing of the dollar. Um, you know, they need to lower interest rates, which will cause more inflation. And it's all these different things. And the, the scenarios out there, you know, could it get to the point where silver is at 7,000 an ounce and gold is at 100,000 an ounce? Absolutely. All right. Now, I'm a preacher, if you don't know that. And uh, why do I talk about the thing of precious metals? Because I'm trying to make my... Uh, the, peop the viewers and things, I'm trying to make you all covetous? No, that's not why I'm doing this. Because you have to understand why the Bible says about gold and silver being used as money, uh, as a way to um, protect your wealth and everything else. Again, it's not about um, I'm ultra wealthy and therefore I will buy gold and silver because I just have nothing else to do with my money. That's not the case. You have to understand that uh, fiat currencies, um, like paper, any kind of paper currency um, out there, those types of currencies are something that can crash and, and that can go away at any time. And when you actually understand this situation, you'll realize that it's not really that gold is becoming more valuable, it's that the, the dollar is actually losing value. It's so important to understand that. Um, when God made the earth, he made gold and silver to be uh, the currency, a medium of exchange, something that has real value to it. That's why when you get to heaven, if you're saved, very important to get that figured out, when you get to heaven, it's not... Um, you know, the streets are paved with dollar bills or something, or, or cryptocurrency. Uh, definitely not that. Um, the streets are paved with gold. And um, at the judgment seat of Christ, uh, Jesus Christ hands out to those who are saved as a reward, uh, according to the scriptures. He hands out gold, silver, and precious stones. Hmm. And I think that God has, has put it into our hearts and into our minds that precious metals, that's where it's at. We're supposed to have precious metals. We're supposed to look at that and say, hmm, I think this is good. And a, another reason that I believe in precious metals um, is because when you have your money completely in the bank, the bank can lend out that money and they do lend out that money to whoever they want. And they can lend it out to a bar in your area or a strip club or people that hate God and whatever some wicked atheist comes in there and they want to uh, take out a loan to start an organization to attack Christians in the area, the bank will loan them your money. That's how it works. Um, but uh, right now, where we're at in this country is the Federal Reserve wants to continue their scam. Um, if you understand anything about uh, history, whenever you have a currency it will go through different life cycles and it will, they'll print 
way too much of it and lend it out to a whole bunch of people and they'll get away from the thing of having it backed by gold. That's how they start out. Oh, we have for every dollar that we give you, um, there's a dollar's worth of gold in the bank. Don't worry about it. Everything will be fine. Um, and then they start to get greedy and they say, well, we'll just print a few more dollars and we don't exactly have the gold backing for it, but that's okay. You know, because the customers feel secure, they feel safe, they trust the dollars that we print. So we'll just print some more here. Well, maybe a little bit more and a little bit more. And, and before long, they've got huge amounts of dollars promised out there to people that, oh, it's all, it's all backed up by gold, don't worry. And the reality of it is it's not. And uh, I, forget, I think the gold to paper ratio right now is 127 uh, promised ounces of gold for every one ounce of actual gold. And silver is 403 promised ounces of silver for every one ounce of actual physical silver. So a lot of the people that get into the thing of investing in silver certificates or, you know, um, I want my retirement money to be put into silver or something like this. Um, if you don't actually have the physical silver in your possession at your property, then you're being ripped off. I can pretty much tell you that unless you deal with... Uh, a company, I think SD Bullion actually will put it in a vault at their facility. Um, but it's, I mean, there's videos out there that they put out showing the actual physical metal that they have in their facility. And so it's not a matter of that they're just telling you that they have it and they actually don't. No, they actually have it there in their vault. But unless you have a situation like that, um, chances are you're being deceived, you're being lied to. Just the same thing as if you have money in the bank, your money is not actually in the bank. Okay, so that doesn't make sense. Oh, yes, it does. If you have $2,000 or something in the bank, there's no little box in the bank with $2,000 in cash. All right, you bring in cash or you bring in your, excuse me, paycheck or whatever, the bank takes that and they put it into their own pool of money and then they lend it out. They do it all the time. And of course, the biggest thing, when you study the financial world, um, which is actually very important, you'll realize that if you start to study it as a Christian, when you study it, you will realize that the whole stock market thing and all this other stuff, it's gambling. That's what they do. These people gamble with other people's money. I mean, there are countless videos out there, scores of videos where people talk about this making, you know, getting wealthy with other people's money. That's thievery, that's stealing. And if you think God is going to bless something like that um, and give that person long life and good health and, and great wisdom and, and save them and whatever else, um, no, uh, back in the book of Genesis, when God kicks Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden, he says that by the sweat of your brow, you're to make your living. You're to work with your hands and work hard and Robert Kiyosaki, I guess we'd call that a poor dad. Somebody who's poor in their thinking. Um, I don't think that way. I don't agree with that. It's very ridiculous. I'll tell you a little story here. Um, my grandfather on my mother's side, uh, Bernard Fry was his name. And I remember he told the story of when he was a young man. He was born in the early 1900s. Um, I guess in the, 19, the teens, somewhere in there. And uh, I forget the exact year that he was born, but he, when he got older, as a, when he got out of high school or whatever, well, they, I guess he only went to eighth grade back in those days because the education was actually really good and eighth grade education back in the early 1900s was better than a, a lot of college education nowadays. Uh, they were very smart back then, but that's another issue. Uh, there's actually, I think, a website that shows you that an eighth grade exam or something and you can take it and a lot of college students can't even pass it <laughs> but um that's a whole other story but he went to a bible college after he graduated or got out of school grade school and um and i guess he went for a year or something like that and uh after he got out of that he was working and things his father had a wallpaper business that they would paper wallpaper people's, you know, homes and things, living rooms, bedrooms, whatever. 
and uh, my grandfather was really good at wallpapering and um, you know he would wallpaper something and you could tell I mean the the design you could barely even see the seam between the two different you know portions of the wallpaper but he worked really hard and I remember he told a story about how that um, after he had worked for so many hours and put in all this time he went into the bank and he requested a $20 gold piece um, back in the 1920s before everything fell apart with the stock market crash and everything. I don't remember the year, but it was in the 1920s sometime. And he paid off his entire college debt with one $20 gold coin. Pretty incredible. I mean, you say, well, oh, times really haven't changed much where things have gotten better, you know, and whatever. Uh, can you do that today? Can you go into a bank and say, I'd like to have a $20 gold piece? And go and pay off your college debt with one coin? See what I'm saying? Um, our money, our wealth, I'll say it that way, is being robbed. It's being taken from us. And most people don't even realize it. You know, oh, I don't need to study that. You know, I'm just a, as a Christian, you don't need to study anything like that. You can just kind of um, go through life and trust the banking and whatever. That's not very smart. And right now there are laws in place where they can bail in. If the bank starts to have problems and you have a lot of your money in the bank, um, that thieving organization called the bank, they can take your money. Did you know that? Check it out. You'll see that I'm right. They can bail in and say, hey, we're having a problem, so now you become a stockholder. Congratulations. Your money is now our money. And you can't get it. And if you study the Great Depression... They actually were doing that to people. They actually were saying, you can't take your money out. You are forced to keep your money here in the bank, and there's anything you can do about it. And right now, the Fed, in order to continue their scam, as I was saying earlier, got a little bit sidetracked there, but uh, fiat currencies, they will come up, they get greedy, and then they crash, and then they have to start over again. And then, you know... I mean, there are a lot of ways that they could solve the problems here. We'll get back to that in a little bit. But the currency cycles have to, it's a boom and bust type of a thing. They have to eventually, you know, get a new currency and print the new currency and because the old one's no good anymore and you just throw out those old bills because they've been hyperinflated. All right. But if they can make it digital, oh, the Fed now program. If they can bring in a digital currency, well, then the sky's the limit. You can do all kinds of stuff with a digital currency. And uh, that's what they want. And so that's why I'm saying uh, I don't get anywhere near Bitcoin or any other of these cryptocurrencies because it's just a, it's a gambling scheme where you can get rich quick. And I don't believe in getting rich quick. I think that that's wrong. I don't think that you're working hard for your money. And it's something that God will not bless. Um... <clears throat> and you start messing around with that type of stuff as a lost person, the Holy Spirit of God is not going to get anywhere near you. I will tell you that right now. You will not be convicted of sin because unless God has a lot of extra grace for you or people are praying for you or something, um, but I've seen that thing over the years. You start to, you know, they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9, the very next verse, for the love of money is the root of all evil. And it goes on. But 1 Timothy 6, 10. Um, you have to be real careful about this money stuff. It's, uh, and it's funny because, like I've said in different videos, uh, not funny, but it's interesting that the mark of the beast prophecy in the future is a financial slash spiritual system. A merger of religion with finance. Huh. And if you take that mark of the beast in the future, you are damned to hell for all of eternity. Uh, well, hell and then the great white throne judgment and then the lake of fire, to be very pre precise about this. And there's no way to get out of that. So does God care about finances and things? Oh, yes, he does very much. And you better be careful uh, what you're getting yourself into. It's not uh, building good character to... Um, get into this whole digital currency, cryptocurrency type of thing so that you can get rich quick. 
Um, but uh, what are we going, going to be looking at in the future? Well, I believe what we're going to be looking at, unless the Fed is stopped, unless some actions are made to stop them, um, which I'll talk about something interesting in that uh, line of thought, um, the Federal Reserve is just going to hold the American people hostage with hyperinflation, and they're just going to continue to put the screws, you know, like the thumb screw torture thing. They turn the screws and the pain gets worse and worse until you finally submit. Well, they're going to do that kind of a thing with hyperinflation, is what I believe. They will continue to tighten uh, the screws on people, and people will be able to buy less and less and become more and more in debt. I mean, the average American household right now is just drowning in debt. Uh, you say, well, yeah, that's just the reality. You can't possibly live debt-free. We do. I'm not in any debt. By God's grace, we do not have any debt at all. Uh, this property that I'm walking on was paid for um, completely. And I didn't get debt to pay for it either. I paid for it in cash. Got a very good deal on the property. And we live very simple, and we live very cheap. Very frugal in our living to avoid debt. And we have one income, too, by the way. So, uh, yes, there are ways to get out of debt. It requires some struggle and some sacrifice. Okay? Um, you have to understand that. But I believe that the Federal Reserve is just going to continue to mess around with the, the interest rate thing and whatever else. And the inflation will go up and it will become more expensive to live. And, and, oh, you know, we're about ready to go to war and, and whatever. Well, that won't cost us anything. Everything will be fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> But um, this whole thing with war, let me just say this very quickly. Again, what is the importance of war? Well, the bankers make most of their money from war cycles. When they can have a war, they can make lots of money. All the people dying, all the bullets being expended, and all the guns blown up, and the tanks, and the airplanes, and the, the fuel, and the pay for the soldiers and the uniforms and food and, you know, everything. It just is a huge, big opportunity for people to get into more debt. Um, the problem is that America can't wage a World War III multiple theater type of operation. And so it would have to be very fast and very destructive, um, you know, maybe nuclear. And that would be the only way that America could really win any kind of World War III against Russia um, or China uh, or Iran helping out Israel. Um, those aren't going to be Afghanistan type wars or Iraq type wars where we went over there and just, you know, meddled around for, what, 20 years or something. Um, ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And anybody in the military, um, you know that the military um, is no longer what it once was here in America. And winning a multiple theater uh, war is not going to be happening anytime soon. And if we would go to war, which we're very close to it, um, I mean, we're already at war. Let's face it, we're spending billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars in the war in Ukraine. But if we would go to war, it would, um, it would destroy this nation so quickly. But you say, why are we doing this thing in Ukraine? I don't understand. If we don't have the money, why do we go to Ukraine and, and you know, we're sending F-16s over there and now they just got those and probably send other stuff over. Why? Well, because the only way to stop BRICS is to stop Russia. That's why NATO is so intent on this war in Ukraine. They have to stop Russia at all costs. No matter what, Russia must be stopped. Um, and Russia's not going to be stopped. Because Russia is in Bible prophecy. There's a great power from the north and the east, the kings of the east. And there's a northern power among that kings of the east that is very powerful in the end times. There's no western superpower in the end times. Hmm. I think that can kind of tell you, tells you who's going to win this whole World War III thing. And of course you have the BRICS meeting coming up here in October, just a few months away now. Um, where there are going to be more countries joining, they're going to be talking about this, you know, BRICS currency thing. Um, and a lot of these nations now realize that the thing that once enslaved them, the dollar, the weaponized American dollar, 
now that weapon can be turned back on America. And you can inject the dollar into the, um, you know, start s selling off dollars and things and treasury bills and all that. And it's going to, uh, again, speed up the hyperinflation of this nation. It's, you know, bad times are coming. And again, I want you to understand another thing here. Um, and that is the issue of precious metals. Historically speaking, um, if you go back through the thousands of years that, that people have been on the earth and economies have been working and whatever else, um, gold and silver wasn't, the, wasn't common for a lot of people. A lot of people, I mean, unless you were of noble birth or you're kind of up there in society, most people did not have gold and silver. Uh, the peasant classes, they bartered, they traded. Hey, I'm a fisherman. I'll trade my fish for your beef. I'll, I'll trade my beef for your um, fruits or whatever else, your vegetables that you grow or things like that. Um, gold and silver has not been something that you can readily get and have available. Um, right now, you still have a chance here in America to get some uh, precious metal coins. And if, if uh, things continue as they are, and all of a sudden you start to see precious metals, the other countries start to push for the precious metals to go up, um, you could uh, uh, save yourself from some very serious financial grief. It's not about becoming a multimillionaire or something like that. It's about saving yourself from financial ruin and losing everything because of the currency hyperinflating to the point where it's not worth anything. So um, take my advice here. I mean, let's just think here for a minute. If silver um, would go to 7,000 an ounce because of hyperinflation and other things coming in. I mean, I saw a guy yesterday, a, a silver, uh, he actually has a silver mint there plus the uh, silver dealership. And he was going through different numbers and statistics, and he went through the thing of the gold to paper ratio, and then the revaluing of silver being 15 to 1 instead of 80 to 1 or whatever. And he said silver could literally hit over $20,000 an ounce on, with these numbers. So he's providing the numbers showing the proof that, yes, it could go very high. And, um, and I have to say something else. There's a lot to say in this video. Uh... The thing of silver. Silver has a lot of usage in industry as well, particularly in the war industry. I actually saw a thing here recently that cruise missiles used by America actually have 500 ounces of silver per missile. And if you know anything about silver coins, you can get a monster box, they call it. It's a big box of 500 one ounce coins. Uh, quite expensive. But every time they shoot a cruise missile, there's 500 ounces of silver that goes and hits the targets and blown up. Are we going into a war cycle? Yes. Will there be more of a need for silver in that war cycle? Um, yes. Uh, I think so. What about solar panels? Some birds flying around in the tree up here. Probably hear them. And um, what about solar panels? Uh, yeah. It's silver is the most used metal in solar panels. Hmm. Um, you might want to think about what I'm telling you here. Uh, there are ways that you can get it, and you can still get silver coins for, you know, what, $30, $40 a coin, one ounce coin. And if those coins go up in value to several thousand dollars or something, uh, you'll be able to eat. You'll be able to actually buy things. Uh, don't rely on your paper... Uh, currency and do, don't rely on debt okay uh, that's a very bad thing because the more in debt you get <laughs> the more you are enslaved and um, one other thing I want to mention here I have my little notebook here some points I wrote down but uh, one other thing I'd like to mention I did hear about this thing yesterday my wife actually was telling me about this she's you know was doing some research into this and there's a Something about the Treasury, the U.S. Treasury um, is talking about the possibility of minting a, um, a number of $1 trillion uh, platinum coins. 
Uh, if any of you have heard about this, um, please let me know down in the comments. Uh, she told me last night when we shut our computers down, then we eat our supper, and then we come back here, um, you know, for the night. And then we go back to the office the next day, and I'm... And I was really tempted to go back in and turn my computer back on and do some research on this, but I'll be doing the research today. Um, but that fascinates me. Because I was thinking about that, and I thought, well, it would make sense, you know, if you make a platinum coin, because most people don't have platinum, so they could buy up a bunch of it right now, and it's actually very cheap. Um, platinum, historically, has been worth more than gold. That's why you have, um, you know some popular music album, they'll say if it went platinum, that's the highest level. Um, because platinum, like I said, was worth more than gold throughout most of its history. It's, a, it's not an ancient metal or anything, not mentioned in scripture. But if the United States could mint a platinum coin, hmm, how many other countries are really uh, stocking up on platinum? I don't know. Um, so... I have no idea if it's true or not or whatever else. Like I said, if you know anything about it, put it in the comments. I like to read your comments. Can't reply to everybody, but uh, I do like to look at the comments. And um, <clears throat> so let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, what about this thing of a, a platinum, a $1 trillion platinum coin that they could, you know, again, you have to back up your cu currency with something. Um, put your money where your mouth is, as the old saying goes. Uh, America can talk a big talk and, oh, we're the wealthiest nation in the world. Uh, well, if you are trying to say that uh, debt is wealth, then I guess, yeah, America's the best. <laughs> but um, we're not. America, Americans are not wealthy people. Americans are in debt. Uh, a nation of debtors is a nation of slaves. And, you know, again, I understand people out there, you get in yourself into debt because of things you need. I, I understand that, the difficulty of buying a house and whatever with cash, I understand. I really do. But when I see people and they're buying, you know, brand new vehicles and they're buying, you know, ATVs, UTVs, motorcycles, boats, uh, going on trips and, and buying just the latest things and big screen TVs and everything else, I think to myself, um, <laughs> I don't really have a whole lot of sympathy for you. If you're buying all that stuff and getting yourself into lots of debt, the borrower is servant to the lender, the Bible says. Uh, the Bible never speaks well of being in debt. Um, it's Again, it's something that's understood. People get into that. Um, I was in debt in the past. Okay, so uh, never a mortgage or anything, thankfully. But, um, you know, it's just something that you need to get worked out. So... But that will be it. Um, could silver go to 7,000 an ounce? Could gold go to 100,000 an ounce? Um, brethren, and people that aren't brethren, anything at all is possible at this point in time. Anything. Uh, when you are dealing with central banks that can print uh, whatever they want, um, the sky is the limit. So... I'm trying to avoid you suffering. I'm trying to warn you so that you prepare for what could be some pretty bad stuff coming. Please take heed to my words. Study it for yourself. Let me know what you think about the platinum coin thing in the comment section below. And we'll see you in upcoming videos. Thank you very much for watching, as always.